Henry's health and safety. The engines of Sodor all want to be really useful. Their wheels were, their pistons pump, and their boilers bubble brightly. But sometimes things can go wrong. One morning, Henry was huffing happily. He clickety-clacked around a bend, straight into an old freight car. Flatten my funnel. Who left that there? Henry's piston rods were bumped and bent. Oh, my! Henry, I will chant you to the steam wax. Thank you, hero. Victor was pleased to see Henry. Kevin and I will have your pistons pumping by lunchtime. We will, boss. So, you bashed into an old freight car, Henry. Someone must have left it there. Health and safety, Henry. Henry was an old engine, but he didn't know what health and safety was. Health and safety, Henry, is watching out for things that might make accidents happen. And you, Henry, had an accident. Bam! Later, Henry was fixed. Watch out now for health and safety. Anything dangerous must be taken away. If not, bam! Thank you, Victor. And Henry chuffed carefully out of the steamworks. Henry chuffed and puffed. Then, he saw a flatbed of telegraph poles. One pole rolled slowly off and onto the tracks. Henry was worried. Bust my buffers! An accident could happen here. I must get Rocky. Henry puffed into the rescue center. Rocky, come quickly! Rocky was worried. You'll have to ask the rescue manager. I might be needed for an emergency. This is an emergency. Health and safety. Rocky was puzzled. But health and safety sounded important. So Henry shunted Rocky quickly away. Henry and Rocky puffed to the poles. Lift them out of the way, Rocky! Later, Rocky and Henry had put the flatbed safely into a siding. Henry was pleased with himself. Health and safety is the way to keep the tracks clear every day. You're right, Henry. Now I have to go back to the rescue center. Hello, Percy. Percy was puzzled. Bubbling boilers? I thought there were telegraph poles here. Health and safety, Percy! And Henry puffed away with Rocky. Henry and Rocky chuffed to a junction. Henry saw four large rolls of wire. Henry was worried. Oh my, Rocky! If one of those rolls across the junction, an accident might happen. We must move it. Aren't you going to ask first, Henry? This is an emergency! Health and safety! Later, the rolls of wire were safely in a siding. Henry was happy. Health and safety is the way to keep the tracks clear every day! You're right, Henry. Now I have to go back to the rescue center. Then, Henry saw Percy again. Hello, Percy. Flatten my funnel. I thought there were rolls of wire here. Health and safety, Percy. Percy was puzzled. 
Now the telegraph poles and the wire have gone. But Henry was too far away to hear. Henry was steaming slowly to the rescue center. Then Percy raced past. Cool your pistons, Percy! Slow and careful is the way. Health and safety every day. But Percy was in too much of a hurry to hear. Later, Henry and Rocky chuffed cheerfully along. Suddenly, Percy whooshed round a bend and stopped. Oh, no! Oh, dear. What's happened, Percy? I've puffed too far too fast. Now I've run out of water. Henry was worried. Rocky will have to move you, Percy. Health and safety. And before Percy could reach another word, he was swinging high above the track from Rocky's long crane arm. Then there was trouble. Sir Topham had arrived. He was cross. Rocky, what are you doing with Percy? It's health and safety, sir. Health and safety have a time and a place, Henry. But now there is an emergency. I need Rocky to help Toby, and Percy has looked all over the island for the telegraph poles and wire he has to deliver. Henry felt terrible. I should have asked if I could take Rocky, and I should have asked Percy about the poles and wires. I'm sorry, sir. I wanted to stop accidents, but instead, I have made them happen. May I take Rocky now to the emergency? Yes, Henry. Right away. So Percy was lowered with a bump and a jump. Then Henry raced Rocky to Toby. Toby's cowcatcher had caught, and he had derailed. This was an emergency. Now I must help Percy. On the way. Henry saw an old freight car on the track. He was worried. Fizzling fireboxes, health and safety. Then Henry saw Thomas. Thomas, why is this old freight car here? Don't worry, Henry. I have to shunt it to the coal yard. Henry felt happy he had asked, and he puffed quickly on. Henry picked up the rolls of wire and the telegraph poles. Then he chuffed cheerfully away to find Percy. Henry found Percy by the water tower. Percy couldn't puff. A tree had fallen across his track. Oh dear, Percy! Can I help? Yes, please, Henry. Henry knew just what to do. Henry chuffed to find Rocky. Health and safety is the way. Just ask first to save the day. James in the dark. The sun was setting at the end of another busy day on the island of Sodor. All the engines were very excited. Alicia Bati was to sing in the town square that evening. Sir Topham Hatt had a very special job for James. James, you will bring Alicia Bati, the mayor, and the Sodor Brass Band to the concert. Yes, sir. It will be very dark tonight. You must have a lamp fitted. Yes, sir. James puffed happily to the steamworks. Victor and Kevin were there. Hello, James, my friend. Your paintwork looks especially shiny. That made James very happy. 
That's because everyone must look their best for the concert tonight. Sorry, boss. Slip of the hook. A workman brought a lamp for James. James didn't like the lamp. This lamp will make me look silly. Everyone at the concert will look their best except me. The workman tried to fit the lamp to James's boiler. Then to his buffer. Then to his funnel. The workman had tried his best, but still James did not like his lamp. It makes me look silly. I will not wear that silly lamp. And James puffed huffily out of the steamworks to pick up the very important visitors. Later at the next junction, James met an engine. The engine was Thomas. Thomas's lamp was shining brightly. Hello, James. Where's your lamp? It was dark now. James couldn't see which engine was there. Lamps just make engines look silly. Goodbye, Henry. I'm not Henry. I'm Thomas. But James didn't hear. He was already puffing away into the darkness. The evening became darker and darker. Now James could see even less. Then there was trouble. There was a station ahead. This is where I pick up Alicia Botti and the mayor. All aboard! But James hadn't picked up Alicia Botti and the mayor. He had picked up Farmer McColl and his prize cow. James hadn't seen them on the platform. It was too dark. James could hardly see anything. At the next junction, James met an engine. The engine was Edward. Edward had his lamp on. Hello, James. Where's your lamp? James couldn't see which engine was there. Lamps make engines look silly. Goodbye, Percy. I'm not Percy. I'm Edward. But James didn't hear. He was already chuffing into the darkness. The night was now very dark. This is where I pick up the Sodor Brass Band. But it wasn't the Sodor Brass Band. It was Farmer Trotter and his herd of prize pigs. All aboard! But James couldn't see them on the platform. James couldn't see anything. It was too dark. At last, James chuffed into the town hall. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. Here I am, sir. I have picked up all our very important visitors. James, what have you done? You have brought Farmer McCall and his cow and Farmer Trotter and his pigs. I was expecting Alicia Botti and the mayor. James felt terrible. Bust my buffers. I thought a lamp made me look silly. Now I really look silly. I'm sorry, sir. This is all my fault. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Please, sir, I will have my lamp fixed. Then I will race like the wind to deliver Farmer McCall and Farmer Trotter to Brendam. Later, I will pick up the very important visitors. Just then, Thomas puffed in. He had the workman with James's lamp in his cab. This time, James let the workman fit the lamp, and he didn't feel silly. Edward steamed in. Hello, James. 
Your lamp looks good. I know. Now I can see really well in the dark. But you are still late, James. James was worried. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Sir, can Thomas and Edward pick up the visitors? And I will go to Brendam. That's a good idea, James. Then you must come straight back here. Yes, sir. So, James set off for Brendam Docks. His new lamp glowed brightly in the dark. James arrived at the docks just in time. Goodbye! Then, James pumped his pistons. He set off once more for the town hall. James chuffed happily along. Now, he could see everything in the dark. James liked having a lamp. I can see how beautiful Sodor looks at night. James puffed into the town square. Alicia Bati was singing sweetly. Then James gasped. There was another surprise. Thomas and Edward were using their strong lamps to light the concert. Please, sir, may I shine my lamp on Miss Bati? Then everyone will see her for miles around. Very well, James. Now, James didn't feel silly at all. He felt very, very important. And when Alicia Bati smiled at him, James couldn't have felt more proud of his bright, beaming lamp. Thomas's tall friend. The island of Sodor has many wonderful places to visit. Today was a special day. A new animal park was to be opened on Sodor. There were wide open spaces for the animals to live in. All the engines were very excited. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. He beamed from buffer to buffer. Good morning, Percy. Good morning, Thomas. Look at my special leaves to feed the animals. I have rosy red apples for the animals. And I am to take the mayor and Sir Topham Hatt to open the park. Do you have a special, Thomas? I am to take the tallest animal on Sodor up to the animal park. Percy and Edward gasped. What is it, Thomas? It's a giraffe. All the engines wished with wonder. They had never seen a giraffe before. Fizzling fireboxes, Mr. Giraffe. You are very tall. Edward, Gordon, and Percy were puzzled. Will he blow over? Why is he so spotty? Does he sit down? Of course he'll sit down. You must wait for the giraffe keeper. The giraffe will do what his keeper tells him. But Thomas didn't want to wait for the giraffe keeper. He wanted to show the children the tallest animal on Sodor. Don't worry, Cranky. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. And Thomas puffed proudly out of the docks. Thomas and the giraffe puffed happily along. Children waved and whooped 
and Thomas's firebox fizz with excitement. Thomas slowed as he puffed to a low bridge. Sit down, Mr. Giraffe. The giraffe didn't want to sit down. He wanted to see the sights of Sodor. Thomas wished. Then he heard a familiar whistle. It was Gordon. He was taking the mayor and Sir Topham Hatt to the animal park. Out of the way! Express coming through! I can't go under the bridge with Mr. Giraffe. This made Gordon grumpy. You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No, thank you, Gordon. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. So Gordon huffed huffily away. But Thomas didn't know how to make the giraffe sit down. Thomas saw some cows. They munched merrily, then lay lazily in the sun. Edward chuffed up. An idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Edward, can Mr. Giraffe eat some of your apples? Why, Thomas? Because then he will feel sleepy and lie down. Edward was puzzled, but he wanted to help his friend Thomas. Thank you, Edward. The giraffe liked Edward's rosy red apples. He liked them so much, he ate and ate and ate. And he didn't sit down. Edward was upset. Bubbling boilers! You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No, thank you, Edward. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. But Thomas was worried. Sir Topham Hatt and the mayor would be waiting at the animal park. Then, Percy puffed past. Hello, Thomas. What's the matter? Mr. Giraffe won't sit down. Can he eat some of your leaves? Then he's sure to want to lie down and sleep. Percy was happy to help his best friend Thomas. The giraffe liked Percy's leaves. He thought they were a wonderful game. Leaves flittered and floated through the air until there were none left at all. Cinders and ashes! I only wanted you to sit down, Mr. Giraffe. Suddenly, the giraffe did sit down, and he closed his eyes. Mr. Giraffe's asleep, Percy. We must steam straight to the animal park. So, Thomas and Percy clickety-clacked along the track and under the bridge to the animal park. Then there was trouble. The mayor and Sir Topham Hatt were cross. They had waited a long time for the tallest animal on Sodor. But the tallest animal on Sodor was fast asleep. Wake up, Mr. Giraffe, please! But the giraffe slept on. This is a disaster, Thomas. Thomas felt terrible. There were no rosy red apples, no juicy leaves, and no wide awake Mr. Giraffe. I know, sir. It is a disaster. I should have waited for the giraffe keeper. I was silly to think Mr. Giraffe would do what I told him. I'll puff my hardest to the docks and bring the keeper here. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. The giraffe keeper was at the docks. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, sir. All aboard!
The giraffe was still asleep when Thomas puffed into the animal park. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will wake up now you're here, sir. And then Thomas chuffed away. He had a lot to do. At Farmer McCall's farm, Thomas picked up more rosy red apples. And from the orchard, more juicy leaves. At last, Thomas puffed and shoved and huffed back to the animal park. Everyone was cheering and clapping Sodor's tallest animal. Mr. Giraffe, you're awake! The giraffe heard Thomas's toot. He stretched his long neck up, 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 and then down to Thomas's face. Welcome to Sodor, Mr. Giraffe. Charlie and Eddie. On the island of Sodor, all the engines are proud to work for Sir Topham Hatt's railway. They chuff and puff, and heave and haul their hardest to make sure Sir Topham Hatt is proud of them. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt's car had broken down. Edward was to take the car to Marin Station. The mechanic was waiting there to fix it. Edward was proud to help Sir Topham Hatt. Just then, Charlie chuffed cheerily in. Good morning, Charlie. Hello, Edward. Do you want to hear a good joke? Where do crocodiles keep their money? I don't know. In a river bank. <laughs> but Edward didn't laugh. He didn't even smile. I have an important job to do. I have to take Sir Topham Hatt's car to Marin Station to be fixed. He needs it this evening. I must hurry. Charlie sighed. You know, Edward, maybe you're too old to be fun. Edward stopped. He didn't like being told that he was too old to be fun. He thought he was as much fun as any young engine. I can be a lot of fun, Charlie. Then show me. Edward huffed and puffed. He knew he should chuff carefully to Marin Station with Sir Topham Hatt's car. But he also knew Charlie wouldn't think that was fun. So Edward decided not to take the careful track. Follow me, Charlie. I'll take you on the bumpiest and jumpiest, the twistiest and turniest tracks to Marin Station. Then you'll see just how much fun I can be. I'm ready, Eddie! So Edward puffed away to Marin Station, with Charlie chuffing close behind. First, Edward and Charlie clickety-clacked along the bumpiest tracks. They jiggled and joggled, and they bumped and they jumped. Wee-hee-hee! This is fun! Next, Edward and Charlie rattled round some of the bendiest bends. Fizzling fireboxes! I didn't think you'd be this much fun, Edward! This made Edward happy. Edward and Charlie rocked and they rolled. They giggled and jiggled. And they told jokes. Okay, Charlie, I have a joke for you. How do you know when an engine is eating? Uh, I don't know, Eddie. Tell me. You hear it? Chewing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Eddie. You really are the most fun of all. At last, Edward and Charlie puffed into Marin Station. Thomas was there, but there was no mechanic on the platform. Hello, Edward. The mechanic was waiting for you. Now he's left on Bertie the bus. Suddenly, Edward was worried. Oh, my. I spent too much time on the bumpy and bendy tracks having fun. Charlie sighed. Is that as much fun as you could be, Edward? Edward didn't like that. No. 
I can be much more fun than that. We'll chase Bertie the bus to catch up with the mechanic. Good idea! I'm ready, Eddie! So, Edward and Charlie pumped their pistons and chuffed off for the chase. Edward and Charlie raced and chased after Bertie the bus. They thundered through crossings. They flew over bridges. And they clattered through tunnels. But Edward and Charlie couldn't catch up with Bertie. Flat my funnel! That was fun! Now, Edward was even more worried. He had not done his job. Sir Topham Hatt would be cross. I think we should stop at the next junction. Then we can ask the signal man to send a message to the mechanic. I was right. You are too old to be fun. Edward didn't like that. Then an idea flew into his funnel. We'll take Sir Topham Hatt's car to the steamworks to be fixed. It's always fun there. Charlie was surprised. Bubbling boilers, Edward! That will be the most fun of all! I'm ready, Eddie! So, Charlie and Edward puffed off to the steamworks. Charlie and Edward steamed in. Hello, Kevin. Where's Victor? Hello, Edward. Victor has gone to pick up a part. Can I help? I'd like you to fix Sir Topham Hatt's car. Kevin was surprised. Sling my hook. We don't fix cars. I'm sure you can. We will be back later to pick up the car. Edward, you're not too old to have fun. You're the most fun of all. That made Edward very happy. Later, Charlie and Edward returned. Kevin was very excited. Here you are, Edward! Kevin trundled to one side. He giggled giddily. <laughs> there was Sir Topham Hatt's car with a funnel on its roof. It's a fun funnel! Edward gasped. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt arrived. He didn't think the funnel was fun at all. Edward, what have you done to my car? Edward felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to be really useful and really fun. But it has all gone wrong. This is a disaster. I wish I had just been really useful. So do I, Edward. Please, sir. I can take you and Lady Hat this evening. Then, tomorrow morning, your car will be fixed. Very well, Edward. Edward had puffed into Knapford Station with Sir Topham and Lady Hat. Charlie was there. Hello, Eddie. I'm ready for more fun. Not now, Charlie. It's not the time for fun. It's the time to be really useful. I have to hurry to the steamworks. Edward puffed into the steamworks. Charlie chuffed close behind. Would you like to hear another joke, Edward? No, thank you, Charlie. This isn't the time for jokes. I have to collect Sir Topham Hatt's car. Kevin. Please, take the funnel off Sir Topham Hatt's car. It was fun, but it wasn't really useful. Right, boss. Uh, Edward, whatever you say. Thank you, Kevin. Later, Edward puffed out of the steamworks with Sir Topham Hatt's car. It was as good as new and funnel-free. All along the track, as Edward clickety-clacked, children whistled and waved. This is fun. And Charlie had to agree. Jumping Joby Wood. 
One of the most special places on the island of Sodor is the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Here, Captain chugs, Rocky rolls, and Harold hovers. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt arrived at the rescue center. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Thomas. I have an important announcement. The engines hushed and huffed. The mayor would like some Joby Wood to build a summer house. He wants the work to start straight away. Thomas's boiler bubbled brightly. This meant a trip to Misty Island. Thomas liked Misty Island. Please, sir, may I go to Misty Island to fetch the Joby Wood? Bash Dash and Ferdinand rocked and rolled. Please, please, can we go too? We know just what to do. That's right, boss. Boss? Sir Topham Hat. Sir Topham Hat. That's right. I would like you three logging locos to stay here on Sodor to learn the ways of my railway. Thomas, you and Edward will go to Misty Island to pick up the Joby Wood. You must leave straight away. Thomas puffed proudly. We'll take the tunnel, Edward. The logging loco spluttered and stuttered. You'll need our help. Oh, Weezy can be wild. And he, Haw, is just plain crazy. That's right. Thomas was stern. No, thank you. Edward and I won't need your help. Old Weezy and he, Haw, won't be any trouble to us. We'll show them how to be really useful. So Thomas and Edward clickety clack down the Misty Island Tunnel. With a huff and a puff and a whoosh of their wheels, they puffed onto Misty Island. Then they raced and they rolled all the way to the Misty Island logging station. Thomas was excited. The Joby would gleam and glowed in the sunshine. Edward's firebox fizzed and fluttered. Oh my! This is a very strange place. Thomas chuckled cheerfully. Don't worry, Edward. When I first chuffed here, I thought Misty Island was strange too. But now, I just think it's special. I'll show you around. Edward's wheels wobbled. Very well, Thomas. After you. So Thomas puffed proudly on. This is the zip line bridge. <laughs> and this is the sawmill. It's very noisy. This is the logging pond. It's loaded with logs. And those two are Old Wheezy and Hee Haw. They're log loaders. Edward was puzzled. They're what? They're log loaders. They load logs. And they're crazy. Edward trembled on the tracks. Oh, my. Then, Thomas puffed perkily towards the Shake Shake Bridge. And this is the Shake Shake Bridge. We have to cross this, Edward, to pick up the Joby logs. Edward gasped. Don't worry, it's just a bit wobbly. So, Edward wheezed and wished onto the Shake Shake Bridge. The bridge wobbled and wibbled with every wheel turn. Trust my buffers! Then Edward stopped. He was scared. Just then, Bash Dash and Ferdinand rattled in. We thought you might need help. And it looks like you do. That's right. No, thank you. We don't need your help. We can do it alone. We'll push the log safely to Sodor and home. If you say so. And Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand rolled away. Then Thomas clickety-clacked along the track to Old Weezy. 
I'll have these logs loaded in no time. Oh, Weezy wished and wheezed. He jiggled and joggled. He puffed and popped into action. Edward was worried. Oh, dear. Don't worry, Edward. You must be firm. Suddenly, old Wheezy grabbed and groaned and whirled and hurled logs everywhere. Logs bounced off Edward. Blistering boilers! And flew past Thomas. Cinders and ashes! Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clacked back. Jumping Joby! It looks like you need our help now! That's right! No, thank you. We don't need your help. We can do it alone. We'll push the log safely to Sodor and home. If you say so. And Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand rattled away. Thomas huffed to Hee Haw. I know Hee Haw will help us. But Hee Haw had run out of oil. It spluttered and stuttered. Thick black smoke all over James and Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Thomas, what is going on? The mayor is waiting for the Joby Wood. Edward is swinging on a bridge. Logs are jumping like frogs. And my shiny red coat is ruined. Thomas felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. This is all my fault. I thought I didn't need help, but I do. And I know exactly who I need to help me. I'll fetch them now. Thomas, Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clattered and chattered down the tunnel, all the way to the logging station. I was silly to think I could do this alone. I need your help. Looks like you do. So we're here to give it. Do as we say. And we'll show you the way. That's, That's right. right. So Thomas let the logging locos help him. Edward was so surprised, he wibbled and wobbled straight off the Shake Shake Ridge. Then the logging loco showed Edward and Thomas how to catch Joby logs as they jumped through the air and bumped onto their flatbed. Finally, Dash's driver filled Hee Haw with oil. Now it could rumble and tumble logs to the cars. At last, the Joby logs were loaded. Thomas led the engines all the way back to Sodor and to the waiting Sir Topham Hatt. You are all really useful engines. Together, you are a team to be proud of. That's right! <laughs> <laughs> Thomas's crazy day. The engines on the island of Sodor always like to be busy. They like to be really useful. And they like to have fun. One morning, Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the steamworks. He had come to see his best friend, Percy. Percy had popped a piston. Hello, Percy. Hello, Thomas. Thomas could see his friend look sad. Cheer up, Percy. Victor will soon have you fixed. But I can't be really useful here. And if I'm not really useful, I can't have fun. Percy, my friend. No more long faces, please. You look like a squeezed lemon on wheels. I will have you fixed by lunchtime. That made Percy smile. Don't worry, Percy. I'll puff back for you, and we can play then. So Thomas clickety-clacked off on the track to see Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for Thomas at Knapford Station. 
So were Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand, the Misty Island engines. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand giggled and jiggled. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Thomas. Thomas. We're happy to see you. That's right. <clears throat> and I, Thomas, have a very important job for you. Thomas puffed with pride. Yes, sir. I want you to work with Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand at Brendam Docks. There is important freight to be loaded by the end of the day. You must show them how to be really useful engines. Of course, sir. Lead the way. We're right behind you, Thomas. That's right. <whistles> But Thomas's firebox flickered and fizzed. Oh my. I told Percy I would play with him. And I don't want to disappoint Percy. But if I play with Percy, Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand will think I'm not a really useful engine. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I can play with Percy and I can show Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand how to be really useful. I'm sure I can do that. That made Thomas's boiler bubble brightly. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand whistled and whooped. They had never seen anything as exciting as this. There are so many ships, so many tracks. That's right. Who's oh, he? This is Cranky. Cranky creaked crossly. He's a crane. That's right. Then an idea popped into Thomas's pistons. Cranky, this is Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand from Misty Island. Please tell them about the docks. I have to chuff away. I will be back very soon. And before Cranky could creak again, Thomas had steamed out of the docks. Percy was waiting for Thomas outside the steamworks. Hello, Percy. Let's play hide and seek. Your turn to hide. Percy's firebox fizzed. He liked playing hide and seek with Thomas. Make sure you find a good hiding place. Don't peep until I find you. Then Thomas raced away to the docks. Cranky was cranky. Hello, Thomas. Cranky doesn't want to talk at all. That's right. It's not my job to talk to engines. Now Thomas was cross. Cranky, you know all about loading freight. Please help Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand. I must do something important. Then I will puff back. Cranky didn't like being told what to do. He creaked and he cranked. But Thomas had already whooshed away. Thomas whirred and whooshed. Must find Percy. Must have fun. Must load freight till the job's well done. Thomas was too busy worrying and whooshing to see Percy. Percy was hiding. Percy was trying not to peep. Can't find Percy. Must go back. Must make sure the freight's on track. So Thomas raced and rattled back to the docks, where Thomas could not believe his eyes. Cranky was luring Ferdinand onto the deck of a mighty steamship. Ferdinand wasn't happy. This is not right. Thomas was upset. Cranky, what are you doing? Cranky crackled. You said, help them load freight. Thomas was horrified. I didn't mean load engines. Maybe not. You weren't here to ask. Thomas felt terrible. Unload Ferdinand now, please. Then Thomas felt worse. Cinders and ashes! Percy won't be having fun at all! And Thomas wished like the wind out of the docks. 
Thomas clickety-clack past Percy's track. Percy? Percy! Where are you? Percy was sad. I'm here, Thomas. You didn't try to find me. You didn't play. This is no fun at all. Now Thomas felt worse than ever. The freight wasn't loaded. Bash Dash and Ferdinand would think he wasn't really useful. And worst of all, Thomas had upset his best friend, Percy. I can't do two things at the same time. Percy was puzzled. What do you mean, Thomas? Thomas thought, and he thought. Then, a much better idea flew into his funnel. Percy, we're going to have fun at the same time as being really useful. Follow me! Thomas and Percy puffed into the docks. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand were waiting. We can show you that really useful engines are really fun ones. Thomas and Percy puffed and puffed. First you watch, and then you wait. Then you hold your car so straight. Never hurry, take your time. One by one, you'll have a line. Then you know you've done your best. You've passed the really useful test. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try our best. We'll have a bash. <laughs> we'll take our time. We'll never dash. <laughs> we'll huff and puff with all our might. Hooray for you. You've done it right. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun, Thomas. That's right. Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. Being really useful is the most fun of all. And even Cranky had to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs>It was an exciting day on the island of Sodor. It was the opening game for the Sodor United soccer team. All the engines huffed and puffed to be ready on time. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. Today is a very busy day. One engine must take the Sodor United team to the soccer field. One engine must take the fans, one must deliver the apples for the halftime break, and the other must collect the dirty washing from Maithwaite Station and take it to the laundry lady. The engines wished happily. Now I must hurry. Thomas, you will decide which engine does which job. Emily was very excited. Soccer is my favorite game. I always puff past the soccer field when the Soda United team is playing. Did you know that the goalkeeper has a lucky pair of gloves? Emily was so busy boasting, she didn't hear her friends. I'll take the team to the soccer field. I'll take the fans. And I'll take the apples for halftime break. <laughs> Wait a minute. What am I going to do? You can take the dirty washing, Emily. Stinky washing? I know all about the Sodor United team. I wanted the most important job. Delivering the washing isn't the most important job. Emily huffed huffily to a junction. She was cross. I don't want to puff to Maithwaite to collect the stinky washing. Then, Emily saw Percy chuff across the bridge. He was on his way to Farmer McColl's farm to collect the apples. Percy has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him. So, Emily didn't chuff to Maithwaite. She took the track to Farmer McColl's farm instead. Emily huffed her hardest to Farmer McColl's. Percy was being coupled up to the car of apples. Hello, Percy. I'll help you. I'll be your back engine. 
No, thank you, Emily. I'm fine. But Emily wanted to help. So, Emily buffered up to the other end of the freight car. She began to pull. Fizzling fireboxes! But Percy was pulling the car from the other side. Then there was trouble. Emily pulled so hard that the coupling broke. The apple car tumbled off the tracks. Apples bounced and rolled everywhere. Percy was cross. I don't need your help, Emily. This is my job. Your job is to collect the washing. Emily didn't want to collect the washing, so she steamed slowly away. I want to help my team win the day. Picking up dirty washing won't help them play. Emily clickety-clacked to a junction. Then Emily saw James. James had collected the Sodor United fans. James has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him with that. So Emily pumped her pistons. She had to puff to the junction before James. James, stop! I can help you with your important job. I'll be your back engine. Then the fans will arrive more quickly. But James was going too fast to stop. Out of my way, Emily! But Emily didn't chuff out of the way. James had to screech into a siding. His wheels whirred, and he bumped into the buffers. Luckily, no one was hurt, but James was cross. Thank you, Emily. I don't need your help. This is my job. Your job is to collect the dirty washing. This made Emily cross. She really didn't want to puff the Maithwaite to collect the washing. James steamed snootily away with the passenger cars of fans. I want the most important job. I want to help my team win the day. Picking up dirty washing won't help them play. Then, Thomas puffed past with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas was going to collect the Sodor United soccer team. Thomas has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him with that. Emily pumped her pistons and wished after Thomas. Emily chuffed into the town square. She screeched to a stop. The Sodor United soccer team was waiting. And Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Emily, where are the team's clean soccer shirts and shorts? Emily was puzzled. Then she gasped. Fizzling fireboxes. The stinky washing was the team's soccer shirts and shorts. Emily felt terrible. I didn't take the washing to the laundry lady. Now the team have nothing to wear for the opening game. The game can't take place. And it's all my fault. Emily felt very silly. I thought that all the other jobs were more important than mine. Now I see that all jobs are important. I'm very sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, team. Emily wished weakly. Please, sir, I'll puff my hardest and make sure the team have clean soccer shirts and shorts in time for the opening game. Emily collected the soccer shirts and shorts from Maithwaite Station. Then she huffed and puffed to Marin Station. The laundry lady quickly washed the clothes. These shirts and shorts are soaking wet. They won't be dry in time for the opening game. Emily was very worried. Then an idea flew into Emily's funnel. Please tie the wet washing to my funnel. The washing can dry in the wind as I race to the town square. Emily chuffed and puffed proudly along the tracks. 
The wet soccer shirts and shorts flapped and fluttered in the wind. Now, the team will have clean washing for the game. My team will be clean and ready to play. Go Soto United, the best team today. Hooray! Everyone waved to Emily. And Emily tooted back. Emily huffed happily into the town square. She was just in time for the soccer game. Here are your clean, dry soccer shirts and shorts. The Sodor United soccer team cheered and clapped. Emily felt very important. Good luck for the game. Two, four, six, eight. We're the team who won't be late. Sodor United. <laughs> Everyone laughed and laughed. And Emily blew her whistle loudest of all. Merry Winter Wish. It was the winter holidays on the island of Sodor. All the engines were excited. That evening, Knapford Station was going to be decorated with lots of winter lights. There were to be red lights, green lights, sparkling lights, and even snowflake lights. Thomas chuffed into Brendam Docks. All the engines were huffing and puffing busily. Salty rolled over. He had some important news. The engines liked important news. A ship will arrive from the mainland. It'll deliver a special winter holiday light for Knapford Station. It will be the biggest light of all. The engines wished with wonder. What's the light called? It is called the Star of Knapford. It's a very special star. If an engine passes by it, they can make a wish. Then maybe, just maybe, their wish will come true. The engines were very excited. They couldn't wait to see the Star of Knapford. Just then, Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, you must wait here. You will have a special to deliver. Yes, sir. Thomas's axles tingled and trembled. A special was best of all. Thomas watched and waited. Then his special arrived. Shiver me timbers, Thomas. Look at that. Cranky lowered the star of Knapford gently onto a flatbed. The star sparked and sparkled. It looked wonderful. Thomas, you will pull the star of Knapford to Knapford Station. Thomas was excited. He thought his pistons would pop. Bubbling boilers! I can't wait to tell my friends about my special. So Thomas buffered up to the star of Knapford. Then he chuffed cheerfully off to Knapford Station. Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. The star of Natford shimmered on his flatbed. Then Thomas saw Percy chuff across the bridge above. An idea popped in Thomas's pistons. I'm sure Percy would like to make a wish. Then maybe, just maybe, Percy's wish will come true, just like Salty said. So Thomas didn't take the track to Natford Station. He puffed quickly to follow Percy. At last, Thomas was side by side with Percy. Percy, Percy, I have the star of Knapford on my flatbed. Percy was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes. Are you taking the star to Knapford Station? Yes, Percy. After you have made a wish. So Thomas pulled the star alongside Percy. Percy looked at the star. Then he closed his eyes tight. I made a wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas very happy. Now I must hurry. Next, Thomas saw Henry chuffing cheerfully. 
I'm sure Henry would like to make a wish. So Thomas wished and whistled away to follow Henry. Thomas raced after Henry, all the way to Tidmiss Sheds. Henry saw the star of Knapford on Thomas's flatbed. His boiler bubbled brightly. Oh, Thomas, you're lucky. Are you taking the star to Knapford? Yes, Henry, after you have made a wish. So Henry closed his eyes. I made my wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas even more happy. Hooray! I hope all my friends' wishes will come true. Thomas chuffed on to Knapford Station. James puffed quickly past. I'm sure James would like to make a wish. So Thomas raced after James. Thomas chased James all the way up Gordon's Hill. Then there was trouble. Thomas rattled and raced down the hill. Stop, James! Thomas's flatbed jiggled and joggled. The star of Natford wiggled and wobbled. Thomas was worried. Cinders and ashes, this is fast! Thomas applied his brakes. His wheels squawked and squeaked. Sparks flickered and flashed. At last, Thomas screeched to a stop. The star of Knapford flew high into the sky. It floated and flickered right over James and Henry and Percy. Then crashed with a crunch and a crack onto the track in front of Thomas. Thomas gasped. The star is broken. Now my friend's wishes might not come true. And it's all my fault. Thomas was upset. How can I get the star to Knapford now? Sir Topham Hatt and the other engines will be waiting. Thomas decided to make a wish. Maybe, just maybe, my wish will come true. Thomas closed his eyes. I wish that one of my friends would come to help me. Suddenly, Percy, Henry, and James whooshed towards him. Thomas's wheels wobbled with wonder. We saw the star of Knapford fly high in the sky. Are you all right, Thomas? Thomas looked at his friends. Then he looked at the broken star. I have been a very silly engine. I wanted you all to make wishes, so I didn't go straight to Knapford. I puffed too far and too fast. Please, will you help me? Thomas's friends were happy to help. Percy watched the star. Henry fetched workmen to fix it. And Thomas and James found Rocky. They huffed him quickly to the star. Soon, the workmen had fixed the star. Rocky lifted it carefully back onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you all. Now we must hurry to Knapford. So, together, the engines wished and they whooshed across Soto. They arrived just in time. Everyone watched as Rocky put the star of Mapford high above the station. Then they clapped and cheered as the star was switched on. It shimmered and shone brightest of all. Thank you, Percy, Henry, Rocky, and James. I'm very lucky to have you all as friends. I'm sorry that your wishes didn't come true. Mine did. I wished that we'd all be together under the star of Knapford. So did I. So did I. Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. His friend's wishes had come true. And that made Thomas happiest of all. Victor says yes. On the island of Sodor, 
The engines like to puff and huff their hardest. Sometimes they huff too hard. Their pistons pop. Their traction rods rattle. And then they must go to the steamworks to be fixed. Victor liked fixing engines, and he liked being busy. And today was a very busy day at the steamworks. Cars and engines were everywhere. Hurry up with those valves. We don't have all day, you know. Percy was waiting to be painted. I'd like to be gleaming and green, please, Victor. And Edward had to be fixed. My broken boiler is bothering me, Victor. Victor clickety-clacked along the tracks from one engine to another. I know, I know, my friends. You all need to be fixed. And you all want to be fixed right away. But I only have one set of wheels, you know. Then Sir Topham Hatt arrived on Gordon. Gordon spluttered and stuttered as he steamed. Victor, Gordon's valves are blocked. They must be cleaned as soon as possible. The children are going on a boat trip. Gordon must be ready to take them to the docks at tea time. Victor was worried. There was no room for Gordon in the steamworks. And the workmen were all busy. But Victor didn't want to upset Sir Topham Hatt. Of course, sir. I will have Gordon puffing perfectly in no time. That made Sir Topham Hatt very happy. Well done, Victor. I'm pleased to see that you are a really useful engine. Really useful engines do their best, and they are the best. Thank you, sir. Thomas chuffed cheerfully up to his friend. Oh my, Victor. The top of hat is very pleased with you. Victor puffed with pride. Thank you, Thomas, my friend. Now, what can I do for you? I have a loose foot plate. Victor knew he had too much to do. He knew he didn't have time to fix Thomas's foot plate, but he wanted to be the best. He wanted to be a really useful engine. Come on in, my friend. I'll fix your foot plate. Gordon, chuff back to let Thomas in. Come on, move over everyone, please. What about my blocks valves? And my broken boiler. And my gleaming green paint. And our valves. We were here first. Sorry, boss. The slip of the hook. Victor huffed and he. All in good time, my friends. Fix Thomas's footplate, please. Then, Emily steamed in. She had to collect an important visitor from Brendam Docks. Emily, my friend. Hello. What can I do for you? My buffers need a perfect polish. Victor knew he had too much to do. He knew he didn't have time to polish Emily's buffers. But he wanted to be the best. He wanted to be a really useful engine. Come along in, Emily, my friend. I will have your buffers polished perfectly. Emily wheezed and squeezed in front of Gordon. What about my blocked valves? My broken boiler. My gleaming green paint. My foot plate. Our valves. We were here first. <laughs> Sorry, boss. Slip of the hook. Fizzling fireboxes. Give Emily some room. Puff back. Puff back, please. What about my blocked valves? Then there was trouble. Black smoke and soot shot from Gordon's valves all over Sir Topham Hatt, who had just arrived in his bright blue car. Suddenly, Sir Topham Hatt's car wasn't bright blue anymore. It was black and sooty. Victor gasped. Fizzling fireboxes. Oh, the indignity. Heaving hooks. Was that meant to happen, boss? No, it was not. 
Sir Topham Hatt was cross. What are you doing, Victor? My car is ruined, and Gordon isn't fixed and ready to take the children to the docks. I thought you were really useful. Victor felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. This is a disaster, and it's all my fault. I wanted to show you that I really am the best, that I am really useful. So I tried to do everything, and I ended up doing nothing. Can I help, boss? No, thank you, Kevin. Now I must do something. Victor steams sadly to Sir Topham Hatt. Sir, if you will let me, I can have Gordon ready in time. Your car will be bright blue again, all the engines will be fixed, and I will be really useful again. Sir Topham Hatt could see Victor was sorry. Very well, Victor, but you'd better hurry. Victor smiled. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Please, my friends. I have been silly. Now I ask you to help me. I can fix all of you, but I cannot fix all of you at the same time. Some of you will have to wait. The engines hooted and tooted. We'll all help you, Victor. Standing by, boss. Victor smiled at his friends. Thank you. First of all, Gordon's valves must be cleaned. What about my buffers? Emily, my friend, your buffers are going to be beautiful for your visitor. Tomorrow, I will have them polished perfectly, but not today. What about my broken boiler? Victor smiled kindly at Edward. Your boiler will be bubbling soon. Please wait. Then Percy puffed out. I really want to be gleaming green. Victor chuckled. I know you do, Percy. And you will be the greenest green there is. But maybe not today. Wait, please, with your friend Edward. Harry and Bert creaked crossly. We were here first! I know you were, my friends. I have not forgotten you. After Gordon, it will be your turn. This made Harry and Bert very happy. Then, Victor chuffed to Thomas. And your footplate, Thomas, my friend. I was silly to say I could fix it today. Don't worry, Victor. I can easily come back tomorrow. Thank you, Thomas. Kevin trundled up. Good work, boss. Later, Victor looked happily around the steamworks. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Sir, Gordon's valves are cleaned and his funnel is steaming. Well done, Victor. I see you are once more a really useful engine. That made Victor very happy. Thank you, sir. Boss, do you think I'm really useful? Victor smiled. Yes, you are, my friend. We are really useful together. <laughs> Pop goes Thomas. It was summer on the island of Sodor. Engines puffed and chuffed happily in the sunshine. The children were excited. Today was their summer picnic in the Whispering Woods. Thomas was excited too. He had a very special special. This is the lemonade for the school picnic, Thomas. You must take it to Whispering Woods Halt. Yes, sir. Thomas had never carried lemonade before. He puffed proudly out of Knapford Station. On the way, Thomas went over some bumpy track. Fizzling fireboxes! Rattle, rattle, shake, shake went the lemonade in Thomas's freight car. And then, pop went one of the corks. Thomas couldn't see what had made the popping sound. <laughs> Bust my buffers! That noise was very funny. 
Thomas stopped at a junction. The Whispering Woods halt is straight ahead. But if I take the left track, it's bumpier. Maybe then I'll hear the funny popping noise again. I'd like that. So Thomas took the left track. The track was very bumpy. Whoa! If I bounce along the track, perhaps that sound will soon come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that jiggle. Rattle, rattle, shake, shake, wobble the lemonade. Pop, 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 burst the corks. <laughs> that sound makes me very happy. Then Thomas saw Mr. Bubbles the clown. He was going to the school picnic too. Hello, Mr. Bubbles. Isn't this the funniest noise you've heard? A popping cork hit Mr. Bubbles. It knocked his big red nose off. <laughs> But Thomas didn't know he'd knocked off Mr. Bubbles' red nose. He was too busy thinking about the next bit of bumpy track. That was fun. I know where there is some even bumpier track ahead. That means more funny popping. This track was very bumpy indeed. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> If I bounce along the track, perhaps that sound will soon come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that jiggle. Rattle, rattle, shake, shake, wobble the lemonade. Pop, 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 ping the corks right into a field of pigs. The pigs were surprised as corks dropped and plopped into the mud around them. <laughs> What a jolly noise! Then Thomas saw some bakers. They were waiting outside the bakery. They were waiting for Emily. Emily was coming to pick up the cakes for the picnic. Isn't this the funniest noise you've heard? Popping corks hit the bakers oh. and the cakes. Oh. All the cakes were spoiled, but Thomas still didn't notice. He was too busy thinking about the next bit of bumpy track. If I take this track, it will be. The bumpiest track on the whole of Sodor. If I bounce along the track, perhaps that sound will soon come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that jiggle. <laughs> rattle, rattle, shake, shake, jiggle the lemonade. Pop, 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 pop the corks. Then Thomas saw James. James was taking the children to the picnic. Hello, James. Isn't this noise the funniest noise you've heard? But James didn't think it was funny at all when a cork bounced off his shiny red paint. Flatten my funnel. What was that? Then there was trouble. The popping corks hit the signalman. He was so surprised he pulled the wrong lever. The tracks changed. James was sent into a siding. James bumped the buffers. Luckily, no one was hurt. But still, Thomas didn't notice. He was having a wonderful time. At last, Thomas arrived at Whispering Woods Hall. Sir Topham Hatt wasn't happy. Thomas, you have caused confusion and delay. Mr. Bubbles has lost his nose. Now he will be late. When Emily arrived to pick up the cakes, they were spoiled. James has bumped the buffers, and the bottles in your freight car have lost their corks. The lemonade is all gone. Suddenly, the very last cork popped. And knocked Sir Topham Hatt's hat right off his head. Sir Topham Hatt was surprised. 
Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes? The funny popping sound that made me laugh? Must have been the corks! This is all my fault, sir. Thomas felt terrible. Now the children couldn't have their picnic. I could put this right, sir. Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. First, Thomas puffed to the bakery. The bakers had baked more cakes, and they were loaded onto Thomas's freight cars. Then, Thomas chuffed an effort for more lemonade. He saw Mr. Bubbles. Mr. Bubbles had bought a new red nose. I'm sorry about your nose, sir. And I'm sorry I made you late. Now, may I take you to the picnic? That's a splendid idea, Thomas. Soon, Thomas was steaming back to Whispering Woods Halt. On the way, Thomas told Mr. Bubbles all about the popping corks. They made a very funny sound. It made me laugh. It, it made me happy. Soon, Thomas, you will hear a sound that makes you feel even happier. Thomas was puzzled. This time at the junction, Thomas took the flat track straight to Whispering Woods Hall. Thomas arrived at Whispering Woods Hall just in time. Not one of the corks had popped. The children saw Thomas had brought Mr. Bubbles and the cakes. Thomas listened to the children, laughing and cheering. Now, Thomas, that is the happiest sound of all. You're right, Mr. Bubbles. And Thomas <laughs> laughed loudest of all. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha